Every season of Survivor is a story, but sometimes that story can be told over the course of multiple seasons. Some players will have two part stories, while others can play four or even five times and have a much longer tale. Why do some players rise and fall and never recover while others can fall and still get back up and succeed? Today we are going to follow the incredible story of Yul Kwan, who first played on Survivor's 13th season, Survivor Cook Islands. 39 days, 20 people, one. Survivor. Yeah, yeah. Yule Kwan, a 31 year old management consultant, was a castaway on Survivor's 13th season, Survivor Cook Islands. And right away, the show starts off with a bang that is very reminiscent of season one. Right away, all 20 castaways are grabbing supplies and jumping off the ship. No opening talk from Jeff about the twist of the season or asking castaways about how they feel about being on the show. It is game on right from the start. And this is only amplified by Jeff saying Exile Island is back, the super immunity idols back, and we decided to divide our contestants into four tribes by race. It's a big twist that certainly garners a variety of reactions from different players, including Yule. They have been divided into four very unique tribes, Asian American, Caucasian, Latino, and African American. When I saw the tribes were split right along racial lines was, oh God, this is gonna be hard. Just because I, I, I feel like as a people that have the same ethnicity, maybe we'll kind of clash on things. I can care less about divisions by ethnicity. When it comes to surviving, it's a human effort. <laughs> I honestly was stunned. I mean, this is crazy. I mean, I, you know, on one hand, I think it's a great opportunity because I think it's wonderful that there's more minorities. Uh, at the same time, I'm a little bit worried that it might play out to caricatures and stereotypes. Different ethnic groups. I mean, is that kosher? <laughs> no. Yule is on the Asian American tribe, Puka Puka, and while paddling to the beach, Cowboy, uh, another member of the tribe, is making Asian jokes, and everyone is like, please, please don't do this. And this is just what Yule feared would happen. I can't believe a bunch of Asians who are so little wait so much. Come on. No more Asian jokes. Oh, that's right. Cowboy is by far the most outspoken on their tribe, and he doesn't really care how he is perceived, and Yule struggles with what he perceives as a generational gap between them since Cowboy has 11 years on him, but comes across as even older and wiser, but definitely crazy in a fun way. Cowboy is from Vietnam, and a lot of what he does stems from this upbringing, including how he can solve headaches with an amazing technique that requires no medicine, though it does leave a red mark on the forehead. Brad problem was he he didn't have the normal headache. In Vietnamese, we call it a bad wind. It's not a regular migraine on one side or in the back. It's usually like a sinus headache near the front, and that's an indicator of the bad wind. That will go away in a, in a day or two, it fade away. That's called the indicator. What the hell happened to you? <laughs> you put it, you was getting out of the time. And he did that to your face? Yeah. It looks like it's burnt. <laughs> the others, the Asian American, they were born in America. They've lost touch. They were not born in the old country. Where a lot of this stuff was, people don't have antibiotics. So they have to figure out other ways to do it. Cowboy is an interesting guy. I mean, when I first met him, I just thought, kind of wrote him off as a crazy kook. But in between the random kind of any nonsense, there's actually like gems and nuggets of information that are actually useful. Then at the immunity challenge, it is revealed that back during the marooning, Penner stole Yule's chicken, which was a blink and you miss it moment, as you can see. And Penner swears this was an honest mistake, which is made funnier when he loses that same chicken on his beach. I've never seen that flick. <laughs> no! Oh. Anyways, Puka Puka goes on to win immunity, and that is it for the premiere. With four tribes and some crazy characters, the intelligent and well-spoken Yule has kind of taken a back seat. But there is no way he is being voted out before the inevitable tribe swap, considering how much havoc Cowboy is already causing. Yule doesn't want to play into stereotypes, which could result in some conservative gameplay, or maybe he pulls a rabbit out of his hat. We shall see.
Episode 2 sees Ozzy of the I2 tribe set up a big net trap to capture chicken on his beach, which is successful as he gets one. We then immediately cut over to Yule on his tribe using a much simpler contraption and... We got two chickens, woohoo! Good job, Yule, good job. Day four for the Puka tribe started out on a really high note because Yule actually caught two of the chickens. We were really excited because I think everyone was pretty hungry for something substantial. And so Yule's a smart guy, he's very intelligent, and just a good person to have on your side. Hmm, that's an interesting juxtaposition. It means something, and if you know, you know. Anyways, we see Becky and Yule connect over similar interests, and they decide to align with each other. For Yule, this is because he thinks she will play the game in a way that pleases him and aligns with his own interests. I say it's just straight out, like, I, I trust you. No, because I feel like what, you're from the very beginning, yes. Yeah. Becky, she's a lawyer, but she does a lot of nonprofit work. I respect that, and I don't think someone like that is likely to be in this game just to make a lot of money. So I trust her. Despite any thoughts that this could be a romantic relationship, just crush that right away because it isn't and it never will be. We then cut to the nighttime where Cowboy is making more racist jokes and he doesn't quite understand why he should stop when everyone tries explaining this to him. You can just change your accent and start speaking Hindu. Oh, holy cow. <laughs> What do you call a Vietnamese with three dogs? I think the bigger picture is like we get it, but a lot of people won't, won't get, get it. it. Exactly. I don't worry about what other people think. And I just want them to understand that to represent your race is not about avoiding the joke. If you're making jokes based on racial uh, prejudice or, or stereotypes, Already, yes. yeah. it's just going to confirm them in people's yeah, minds exactly. who don't know any better. Well, a joke is a joke, right? No, it's no, not. No, no, no. no. It's not Cowboy is a handful for Yule, but nothing can be done about it for now, considering that Puka Puka goes on to win immunity. But there is a twist. Billy of the I2 tribe chooses Yule to go to Exile Island, and with that, Yule has to spend the night there. And there are only two clues for where this idol should be. Not much to go on. But that doesn't stop Yule and his big brain from trying. Use the mast and an island to form a letter. Block out the South Island and you're doing better. So I've marked the places where that occurs. Holy cow. Woo! Hey, might be it. Oh, mama. Oh. Wow, it's a compass. You have just discovered something of great value. This immunity idol will keep you safe from being voted off the tribal council once only. The last time you can use any hidden immunity idol is when there are four survivors remaining in the game. If there's a clear opportunity where it can change the game, I'd use it. Amazing. Last season it took until episode 4 when someone had 4 clues, and here it only takes 2. Yule is something else. Anyways, while this moment is a big one for Yule, it isn't even the biggest moment of this episode. Believe it or not, as a love story takes place between the unlikely Romeo and Juliet of the season, Billy and Candace. I feel really bad for you guys. We love you. I love you. I'm playing the game. That's what I came here to do. My prize isn't even the million dollars. My prize was that I, I, fell in, I, I fell in love in this game, love at first sight. Her name is Candace. And uh, in between, <laughs> Candace from Roro Tribe. Yeah, after the last challenge, we sort of mouthed the words, I love you to one another. And so that was my prize. And my prize was her. I've never heard anything that surprised me more than what you just said. I think it's just, you know, love at first sight. I think it's just a, 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 a rapport thing. So you're absolutely sincere right now. I'm dead serious. Was that actually important? No. Was it funny? Every single time. Episode 3 starts off with a tribe swap that is way over complicated, but long story short, 4 tribes go down to 2, and Yule is on the new I2 with Becky, Sundra, Ozzy, Cowboy, Cecilia, Flicka, Candace, and Penner. I know what you're thinking, Yule's story is great and all, but what the heck? Does Candace ever find out that Billy was in love with her? Billy, when he left, he said that you guys had like love at first sight. Love and, at first sight. Yes. And I'm, I mean, what did he mean by that? He <laughs> took it like you guys had a love oh connection my God. at first sight. Oh. And he said that that was his million dollars to get to be with you. Or like, you know, know you. You know what I mean? Like get yeah. to be in the same yeah, team yeah, yeah, with you. Yeah. That was just. You let him on, Candace. No, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. are you. you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. This is all even funnier considering what Candace does this season, but back to business. Becky quickly gets to work forming an alliance with the aforementioned Candace and Penner, and says, hey, we can all trust Yule, he's a great guy. 
Penner says, I think we can get Flicka to be our fifth member of this alliance. So we have the numbers in this nine person tribe. Yule then makes a bold move by telling Becky something very important. Hey, so I gotta tell you something. Um, and again, you know, I'm telling you because I totally trust you. Like all the stuff we talked about, I, I really believe in. Yeah. I found the idol. <gasps> no, I trust you. You know that I trust you. No. Becky and I have, I think, a tight bond and strong alliance coming out of our Puka tribe. You know, I, I think it's a huge advantage in this game to have someone that you can absolutely mm -hmm. trust. And I think given our backgrounds and our common interests, so I felt comfortable disclosing the information to her. <laughs> So exciting. Right. So proud. Now, normally doing this would be an incredibly risky move to do, but nothing in the storytelling, edit, music, whatever indicates that this is a bad move. So while it is bold by Yule, nothing indicates here that's going to blow up in his face like it would for probably many other people this season if they had done the same thing. I2 goes on to lose immunity and Rairo sends Candace to Exile Island, which keeps her from going to Tribal Council. And this sucks for Yule's alliance as they needed her vote. We then see Ozzy, Sundra, Cecilia, Flicka, and Cowboy agree to vote out Becky. But then Yule does what Penner cannot and actually gets through to Cowboy, who then gets through to Flicka. Numbers game. We have to make it to the merge so we can play the game some more. I don't want to be picked off. I know, but they're playing bad. Oh no. You're not part of the crowd. I'm not part of the crowd, period. We're just stuck in this. Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, what do you do? I don't know what to do. Cowboy seems to be on board, but Flicka is still up in the air. At Tribal Council, Yule explains that playing this game effectively means understanding what other players' goals and expectations are so you can predict their behavior and figure out how to play with them. My sense is that some people have different priorities in terms of what they're looking for out of being here. I think some people are strategizing and trying to make alliances and came here to play hard to win the game. I think other people came here you know, hoping that this is going to be a personally fulfilling experience for everyone. Yule is right on the money here. If you cannot figure out what another player's goal is or how they plan on achieving it, then winning is going to be much harder for you as you need to know what everyone is thinking or at least majority because they're probably going to end up on the jury and you need their votes to win. Anyways, the vote goes down and it is a tight one. Becky. Two votes, Becky. Becky. Cecilia. Cecilia, Cecilia, we're three votes, Cecilia. Cecilia, third person voted out of Survivor Cook Islands. Cecilia, Cecilia, Your tribe has spoken. Flicka and Cowboy flipped, which is just what Yule needed. Episode four sees Ozzy saying he is depressed now since the vote didn't go his way last night. But then after the tribe wins the reward challenge, he changes his tune as he goes out and catches nine fish. And this is a consistent trend that I'm not gonna focus too much on in this video, but Ozzy is an amazing provider for I2 and Yule even gives him a nickname. This is so great. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna eat. Wow, I'm so proud of you. Today we caught 11 fish and I caught nine of them. I'm happy being the sole provider of this tribe. I feel that I have the most power. If, if they lose me, then they're gonna be losing a lot of strength. I think we should call him Poseidon now or something. Yes. Poseidon. King Neptune. Because he's the god of the sea, right? <laughs> Then at the immunity challenge between Ozzy's impressive physical feat and Cowboy's crazy fire making technique, they win immunity easily. So we slide into episode five, where Yule says he doesn't foresee staying aligned with Cowboy and Flicka in the future since they are driven by emotion and he would rather play with Sundra in his alliance instead. Cowboy and Flicka voted with us last tribal council, but it's just hard to be in any kind of strategic alliance with him because you have no idea what's gonna happen on a day-to-day -day basis. We need a fifth in order to have the numbers. Sandra, I think, is is someone that everyone is kind of leaning towards because she seems not to be a manipulative person. She seems that if she were to commit that she would be very dependable. And you know, she's kind of out here by herself and I think she's looking for a home. We just want to lock down a lot of strong mm -hmm. lives. We want to find the people who aren't going to leave her. Yeah, you know? I'm definitely, I'm definitely down. If it, if it, if it definitely have, you know, if we have to unfortunately go to council, okay. I'm part of the five. Okay. I2 goes on to win immunity. So in episode six, Cowboy and Penner fight over bringing the immunity idol that they won previously to a reward challenge. Yule says Cowboy is the one being hard headed between the two of them. I would bring immunity idol with us at all time. Every challenge, we should bring him. I believe a Tangaroa is the ocean god of fertility and he came to us as the immunity idol. He's our extra member. It means something else to me. It means that when we bring the immunity idol, to a reward challenge that we're sticking it in their face. 
cowboy. He's gone through a lot of things in life. He knows a lot. At the same time, he's very hard-headed. I mean, he's just an unpredictable guy. We then go to Sad Reward Challenge and Twist Time, both tribes are going to tribal council. What fun. I too wins reward, but who cares when someone has to be voted out? Penner tells Yule that Cowboy is annoying others in the camp, aka he's annoying Penner. But then we see how actually people generally don't trust Penner. And while Yule does not fully understand why this is, he says their constant talk of this is rubbing off on me. But Cowboy has a plan. You see, Cowboy assumes that Penner has the hidden immunity idol, and if it isn't him, then it's possibly Candace. He doesn't think Yule has it. So he says, let's flush out their idol. They have this dream. These people are coming into this village, and they were kidnapping people, and they have this rope, and they just wrap around them, and they fly real quick, and become invisible to others. And so I couldn't, I couldn't defeat them. I had this dream. I was dealing with all these supernatural people and with supernatural power. And there's a shaman lady, like this old lady, and she had all kinds of credit card applications. And she asked me if I have an American Express card or these, all the stuff I'm looking at it. And I said, what do I need it for? She said, well, you need three of that and three of that. And I thought, three and three. That's how you can defeat the immunity idol. You can flush it out. And I woke up and I go, whoa, plan voodoo. I think the plan is ingenious. I know that neither Jonathan or Candace have the hidden immunity idol because I have it. It's a brilliant plan, and on its face, it seems like it wouldn't harm Yule at all if it was enacted. Except it actually would. Only three people have been to Exile Island this season. If the vote is split between two of them and the idol is not played, people will start suspecting Yule, and he can't have that. Yule then says that he wants to play Survivor with as much integrity as possible, and he wants to be trusted. I would say so far he's doing this, and pretty much everyone approaches Yule with their strategic thoughts, showing just how trusted he is amongst the group. Then at Tribal Council, Yule compliments Penner by saying he is a natural leader who articulates his thoughts very well, and Penner's kind of flabbergasted by this. So, in a six to one to one vote, Plan Voodoo fails. Six person voted out of Survivor Cook Islands. Cowboy. That's four, that's enough. Cowboy, tribe is spoken. Auto attack. Time for to go. All the way. Fails being a good thing, of course. Episode 7 is a recap episode that has no bearing on the story being told, so we move on to episode 8, where Yule says if we don't merge, then our boot order is Ozzy, then Flicka, then Penner. Penner is at the bottom of his five person alliance, and he worries about Ozzy dominating individual challenges when we get to that point. We then see another interesting juxtaposition as I2 is getting along and working together in a respectful manner, but then we cut over to Rero, who seemingly are not organized and don't get along well at all. Then at the reward challenge, due in large part to Ozzy, they win. Ozzy is really an X factor in almost every challenge, but back at camp, the strangest thing happens. Ozzy catches a bird and Yule realizes he may have underestimated him still. Caught a bird. I was I went to go to the bathroom and it was in the bushes sleeping. And I just crept up on it. Ozzy is amazing. The guy is surprising. I mean I, I underestimated him. Provides a lot of food, but you know at the same time ultimately uh, we feel that we should get rid of him while we still have the control. Uh, rather than wait for a merge and potentially have him dominate some of the individual challenges. I2 then surprisingly goes on to lose immunity. So back at camp, Yule says, even though we lost, Ozzy is far too valuable to their tribe to vote him out now. So let's get rid of Flicka, who's not very helpful. Or maybe Penner? But at Tribal Council, it is decided that Flicka is gone with a six to one vote. Jessica, tribe spoken. Thank you. Episode nine has everyone saying, holy cow, the merge has to be soon. And this is true. The merge usually happens around day 19, and heck, it's day 19. Yule says, as long as we stay tight with our I2 group, we should be fine. This is then immediately followed up by Candace saying, I want to flip when I get the chance. And Penner tells Candace that, hey, whatever you do, I'm doing it as well. You and I are tight. We're gonna make this work. We set something up with Harvey. Let's hope we can do that. Maybe it'll be us four Caucasians in the final four. Me, you, Adam, Parvati, and at that point, we have the numbers. I've trusted you all along, you trusted me, and it's gotten us a long way, and it's gonna get us a long way further. Only two people can sit at the final two, and I want it to be you and me, I swear to God. At the reward challenge, Jeff drops a bomb on everyone that we have not seen presented since season five, when he says, hey, you got 10 seconds. If you wanna switch tribes, Now's your chance to do so. I'm offering each of you the opportunity to mutiny 
and join the other tribe. Two, Candace. Jonathan mutinies at the last second. That is it. Well, 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 that was a twist. Not only do we still not have a merge, but Penner and Candace rejoin Raro, which largely consists of people they don't know, so a risky move by them, but now Raro is up 8-4 to four over I2. I2 all of a sudden realizes what just happened, and immediately they seem to bond, more so than before. They do go on to win reward, and with that comes some words of emotion from Ozzy. You need for four people to die, man. There's four people to die. Cool. On the reward challenge, the newly dubbed I24 feel closer than ever, and it is almost like seeing people bond over something traumatic, except this is Survivor, so nothing actually traumatic has taken place, though it draws a lot of emotion out of Yule. I want you to know, I am so amazingly proud of all of you. I'm totally honored to be sharing this. It's, really, uh, it's like the best feeling I've had since I can ever recall. Uh, me, me too. I don't know when I felt like this. Okay, I like this feeling really good about my tribe. When you see each other's families and see pictures of each other growing up, I mean, it just really hits you that these are real people that you're interacting with, you know, people with hopes and dreams, fears, aspirations. <laughs> We're family out here. That's a funny picture, but truly it is nice to see this side of him, as most of the game he has been the voice of reason and a very logical person, but not truly emotional until now. Then at the immunity challenge, Rayo takes the lead by following the instructions of Jeff who says, use the target we put in your boat, and Yule realizes I don't have to do this, I can do something else and hack this challenge. <laughs> Got it! See? Yes! I can spot the thing through the... <laughs> Rero just wasted a cannonball. They weren't paying attention. Dropped oh, it right please, through the ship. What's that? I said, oh, please. Jonathan getting frustrated by me. Kind of like him finding the super idol on day two. It's a big brain move. We move on to episode 10 where Raro just keeps losing and losing. And they're kind of hogging all the story time, which is why we're not getting a whole lot of I2, as I2 wins reward. And on that reward, Yule is having a good time with the locals, but uh, I think someone might have a crush on him. I was incredibly grateful for the Islanders reaching out and you know being such wonderful hosts. <laughs> Yule's a very complex, very, very intellectual guy. To see him come out of a show was amazing. Man, that guy can dance. I don't know he had it in him. You know, at this point in the game, we've gone from being separated into all of our same ethnicities, and now we're all able to come together and experience a totally new culture, and we carry a piece of their spirit with us into the next challenge. Back-to-back -back episodes of discovering Yule's personality outside of the game has been a breath of fresh air. I2 goes on to win immunity, and that is now four challenges in a row since the mutiny, which is just crazy. All season, he has only lost three challenges in total. His tribes dominate. I say this because in episode 11, we see the toll of these challenges take a hit on him as he looks and feels physically beaten up. There's no sitting on a bench for him like many of Raro get to do, since I2 doesn't have the numbers. But then it happens, merge time. Paints, brushes, blank tribe flag, new buff Ozzy. I2 is still down 5 to 4, but that is way better than the mutiny, which had them down 8 to 4. On the reward feast, Nate compliments Yule by saying, Hey, you are a classy guy. But after some celebration and Penner getting mad that the younger kids are getting faded, Yule and Becky talk about how they don't have a choice. If they want a chance to reach the end, they need someone to flip from Romero to their side. Yule says, I think I can get Penner to flip since he is a pretty rational player that I understand. I just need to figure out what would motivate him to do this. Yule talks to him and Penner says, I can't see flipping back to I2 at all. In fact, there's no way that's happening. Well, unless... I don't believe you can get to the final four unless you're aligned with the person with the item. Because let's say you have the item, okay? And we vote for you. Three of you vote for me, okay? Boom, I'm out. Right? right? right. So 
I would have to align with you because otherwise I'm going to get my ass booted out before the final four. I told you, I said, until you show me the idol, I can't make a decision. If he doesn't show it to me, then he's just blowing smoke ass and there's, there's no reason for me to flip. I'd have to think long and hard about my reaction if you even implied that you could show me the idol. So you're saying there's a chance. Keep in mind that at this point, only Yule, Penner, Candace, and Adam have been to Exile Island and have had a chance to find the idol but obviously we all know Yule has it. Yule then decides that before telling Penner, he should probably tell the rest of the I-24. So he tells Sundra and Ozzy who couldn't be more happy that the idol's on their side and they don't care that he was keeping it a secret. We then see Candace and Penner talk with Candace saying, Yule has to go first. And later on, we see multiple Raro members saying the same thing. Yule seems to be target number one since he is the perceived leader of the I-2. Then at the immunity challenge, everyone must stay on a pole as long as possible. Penner says, this challenge isn't fair to everyone, it's bollocks. I think Jonathan has a point though. What's that? Well, basically the surface area supporting all of us is about the same, even if your feet are a little bit bigger or not. But you know, your, your mass goes up at a faster rate than surface area. It's kind of like why elephants can't run up trees. <laughs> Just what I was thinking. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, I'm never gonna get a date again. Yule's brain is on like a whole other level from the rest of us. Ozzy goes on to win immunity and we then see it reiterated by Parvati and Nate that Yule is their biggest threat and he needs to go. He is way too smart and athletic. Now I know I'm putting dumb on screen. It's because of how big of a target Yule is. Not because he can be voted out. He has the idol in his pocket, but if they were to try to vote for him here and he has to burn his idol, well, he burns his idol. Yule then talks to Penner and says, here is the idol. Do you see it? If you don't flip to I2, we are going to vote you off. This is the Ooh. idol. And I'm asking you for both of our sakes to become my ally again. I was not that surprised when Yule showed me the idol. After our conversation yesterday, it made perfect sense. So now I have a lot to think about and a huge decision to make because Basically, Yule said, vote with us or you're going home tonight. Will Penner actually flip? Eh. He talks to the other Raro members and says, what do we do if Yule has the idol? No one on Raro thinks this is a possibility and says, Penner, that's so dumb. He's the only other guy who's been to exile. There we go. Yule was there for like a day. There's no way he has it. I floated this idea to them. I said, what if Yule has the idol? Well, they were like, he doesn't have it. He's got to go. These people aren't thinking. I don't believe they're smart enough. They don't want to put the mental energy into even running the scenario of what if Yule actually has it. Penner then talks to Yule and says, okay, if I flip, I would want Nate voted out first. Yule says Penner could be playing him, but it's kind of their only shot at survival at this point, and the stakes are huge. At Tribal Council, Becky points out the ongoing flirtatious lust fest of Candace and Adam, and this is then attempted to be redirected back to her and Yule, but Becky says, Unlike them, we aren't putting our heads in each other's laps. We are just friends. So then it becomes time to vote as the fate of I2 hangs in the balance. Yule. Nate. Yule. Two votes, Yule. Nate. Yule. Three votes, Yule. Nate. Yule. Nate. Twelfth person voted out and the fourth member of our jury. Nate. Nate, tribe has spoken. Believe it or not, Penner flipped again. Now he has angered the Raro people to no end, as back at camp they are so, so upset with him that this is all they will focus their energy on until he gets voted out. Leaving I2 a meat shield, unexpected, as Raro still doesn't think Yule has the idol. If I didn't throw in with them, they all would have voted for me. You all would have voted for Yule, and it would have bounced off Yule and hit me. Not if you told Yule us about that. doesn't have the idol. You pissed everyone in this game off. How can this be funnier, you may be asking? Well, well, well. At the Survivor Auction, it is speculated that the idol could still be on Exile, and Yule says, no, it's not an Exile. I have it. I have it. You have the idol. I have the idol. You want to show it to us now? Sure. It's a compass on a necklace. 
looks authentic. I'm glad Parvati authenticated it after two separate times of us hearing her say that there's no way Yule has this thing. Penner pretty much kills the auction, by the way, by winning three separate bidding wars. And back at camp, people are annoyed with him, even Sundra, Becky, and Yule. Penner is getting arrogant after the flip they all feel, and Adam and Parvati then pitch to Yule to please vote out Penner. He says, you'll still be up four to three, we just want him gone. Yule is baffled as to why they're playing so emotionally, and this doesn't resonate or make sense to him. Job is just a slime ball and needs to be voted off. I mean, I understand why you don't like Jonathan, but how does this help you? I don't care. It doesn't help it'll, us. It'll, I'll be at peace with myself yeah. if he's voted out Honestly, for us. Honestly, I will feel like I won. Yeah if he is voted out before I am. Jonathan, it's not my first choice to kind of welcome him back. Like he's, you know, he's he is what he is. I think you're underestimating let me, let me finish. I understand how he thinks, right? The guy is selfish and he's rational, right? So I can predict basically what he's gonna go for. I can predict like what makes sense to him. It's kind of fact that the right. way the three of us vote on the jury too, because you're the ringleader of this. I'm not a ringleader. I mean, you and, are. And, and you have the power yeah. to right now and it won't affect anything with your poor tribe. Let me just, I'm, I'm really sorry guys. I'm just trying to be real honest with you. Not so smart guys. Whether Yule admits it or not, Ozzy, Sundra, and Becky follow him, not vice versa. He is running the show and everyone kind of sees it. We then see Penner getting tired of Parvati, Candace, and Adam constantly slacking, which has been the theme all season with those three, and says, do I really have to keep feeding them? Ozzy says, I don't think this is a moral conundrum. No, you don't have to. And this results in Candace starting a big fight that she drags Yule into as well. We have to feed them this fish. I say no. I don't think that there's really an ethical question. There ain't no such thing as a free lunch, as they say. What's going on, guys? I mean, since when do you guys not sh share? We all came home from that. Everybody has that, their day we, where they lay down in the tent. You know what? That's bollocks, and you know it. And, and yet, everybody and yet, knows that you only care about yourself. Yule said it this afternoon. He can predict your behavior because you're selfish and self that... Look, I said he's a self-interested, rational player, right? To that extent, I can have I have certainty as to how he's going to predict his uh, that I can predict his behavior because I know what's going to like. You don't like Jonathan, and you said that too. Yule lies. He did call Penner selfish earlier, but I really don't think Penner cares either way. He cares more about this blatant aggressive attack from Candace and the slacking of the others. Yule then talks to Becky about his options here and how they relate to the jury and how they will vote if he was to reach the end. Basically what we see here is him thinking ahead and Becky being a sounding board. She doesn't really talk about how it'll affect her and the jury. Then at tribal council, Parvati, Candace, and Adam dump on Penner hard, painting him as the biggest villain since Johnny Fairplay. And Yule says, this isn't accurate. You're a rat. I mean, That's a fact that I'm a rat? I don't even I know mean, what that means. You're, you're just, you I'm talk a cancer. I know, it's enough, Eddie. No, is that right? There's, There's absolutely really no out. reason for you to be around now, though. It's a truth hurts, doesn't it? Come on, guys. That I'm a rat me. and a cancer? Let, come that, on. What, what, that's the you truth? Are. Come on. I would disagree. Well, you're the UN. I'm expecting the UN to come in here and make everything nice. <laughs> the way they're painting the picture is not accurate. I'll leave it at that. He's the puppet master and we're all puppets in his little play. Come on, what do you what do you expect me to do? Okay. Look, we're all here trying to win. You can't fault me for that, I okay? do not at all. I you respect completely, completely all four of you. Then in a vote that isn't clearly explained as to why Penner stays, Candace is voted out five to three. Thirteenth person voted out and the fifth member of our jury, Candace. Well, a kiss is nice. Maybe if it were love, he'd have given you the immunity necklace. <laughs> Candace, Travis spoken. To be fair, if Yule sits next to Becky or Sundra, the jury will vote for him regardless of how far Penner makes it in this game. We then see the reward challenge be something special as it is time for the loved one's visit and we meet Yule's brother, Paul. Hey, oh my God, how are you? How are you? Parvati wins reward and her father chooses Adam and Sundra to go with them while they are gone. Ozzy says, I don't want to catch food if other people from the Rare tribe are going to win competitions. I can't have this. We should hide it. And in a surprising turn of events, Yule agrees. All I know is I can't keep feeding Adam and Parvati and have them win. Yeah, maybe we should just hide the food for a couple days. <laughs> for Adam, Parvati, and Jonathan, no more coconuts. Going, they can go get their own. But then, Adam and Parvati return. 
With them comes a bunch of extra food, so Yule and Ozzy feel a little bit silly for their earlier idea, which they did actually do. They threw coconuts into the forest. Ozzy then goes on to win individual immunity number two, and Adam then pitches to Yule to please vote up Penner now, which puts Yule in an even more uncomfortable position. At this point, it doesn't matter. Why not have me or Party in the fifth spot instead of as opposed to Jonathan? It's a little bit weird for me because I feel like I'm kind of like the Godfather or something, arranging a hit on somebody, and someone's asking like to take out one person. Another. He doesn't deserve it. You know. The truth of the matter is, I don't know if I'm entirely comfortable with it. Yule then talks to Ozzy and says, we can't let Penner and Adam get into the final five. The competition would be too fierce for immunity. So at tribal council, Penner is voted out in a six to one vote. Jonathan, tribe spoken. And I'd like my hat back at some point. Episode 14 sees Yule, Ozzy, and Parvati win reward, which nets them an overnight stay at a spa resort where Parvati is now all of a sudden out of left field for Yule, flirting hard with Ozzy, and Ozzy isn't showing her any romantic interest. But Yule still recognizes the threat Parvati poses and says he may have been underestimating her. After everything's done, like I have a little champagne and some wine in me, and so we just took off our pajamas and hopped in the hot tub. I just peed in my pants and I wasn't even wearing any. <laughs> I've got two naked guys in the hut. Yeah. You're naked too, aren't you? Yeah. I don't know if Parvati is flirting with Ozzy only because she's hoping that there might be some strategic option there. Ozzy, to some extent, might be reciprocating. I mean, if Ozzy responds in some way, maybe somewhere down the line, something might come up. Becky then talks to Yule the next day and says if Ozzy loses his immunity, he needs to go. All he does is win challenges. And what happens when he makes the final three and wins that challenge too? This is a good point, as Ozzy would likely not bring Yule to final two if he was to win. I would not be happy going to the final two with Ozzy. Any one of us going against Ozzy would be likely to lose on the jury. So what do you know, Ozzy goes on to win immunity again, and that is number three for him. Back at camp, Adam talks to Yule and the casualness of Yule's power is so apparent that Adam says, Yule is the master of the I-24. It's really a toss up, but I mean, if you want to stay, I'll, I'll stay. Yeah. If you want to stay, you'll stay. Yule is definitely the puppet master here, and he acts like it too. You know, he told me, you know, if you want to stay, I'll take care of it. It's a done deal. But then Adam and Parvati try talking to Ozzy to flip him to their side, and since Ozzy has immunity, he isn't really motivated to do anything crazy like that. But Yule doesn't like this, so he goes over and talks to Adam. And by talks to Adam, I mean he intimidates him. You know, I, I know you guys are playing game, but don't try to get Ozzy against us. I'm, trying to I'm not him. trying to get him. He was sitting here with, with Parvati, and I gotta say something. Okay. Okay. What, do you understand? I can't sit here and, and just not say anything. Yeah, okay. It makes me uneasy the way Yule reacted, so maybe I was talking more than I should have. Yule is the godfather whether he likes it or not. Now, as you may recall, when Penner was voted off, he asked for someone to bring his hat back to him. He doesn't care who. Yule decides, I'll do this, why not? And without making a scene of it, he just kind of leaves it on the jury bench. Jeff Probst, however, makes a big scene of this by grilling everyone saying, Yule, holy cow, this is the biggest game-changing move ever. You are swinging the jury. I mean, I guess it's now a big move if you want to make it seem like that, Jeff. Much bigger. Thanks for the free jury help. Anyways, they all go to vote and Parvati is out four to two. 15th person voted out and the seventh member of our jury. Parvati. Parvati, the tribe has spoken. Time for the go. Finale time. Yule versus Ozzy versus Becky versus Sundra versus Adam. Who will rise to the top and convince the jury they are worthy of the $1 million? We shall soon find out. Everyone is excited that the I-24 won over Raro since that 8-4 lead was crushed, and now it's 4-1 to in their favor. All they need is for Adam to not win immunity, which he doesn't, as Ozzy wins his fourth. And back at camp, Adam says, hey everyone, want to stir up a little trouble and flush Yule's idol out? And everyone's basically like, nah. Not really. We then go to tribal council and Jeff asks, is there anything that can be done to save Adam? And everyone's like, no. So in a four to one vote, Adam is gone. Adam, the tribe has spoken. Back at camp, Yule says he is happy that this season will end with a winner from a minority tribe, AKA not a white person's way saying, since through 12 seasons before this one, only two winners have not been white, them being Vesepia and Sandra. We then see the final four get tree mail, and it says this is the final immunity challenge, even though there's four players left, 
That's confusing. Are they going to do some sort of like double vote? So at the challenge, Jeff clarifies this. For the first time ever, final tribal council will include not two people, but three. Three really? people will take part in that final vote. Three people will be eligible for the million dollars. Uh, are you telling me that Yule has never been eligible to be voted out all season? Not to discount anything he's done because he's done a lot, but his idol can be played after the votes are read and can be used through the final four. So he was almost handed a free pass to final tribal well all winners have some luck involved anyways now is the only time left to beat ozzy and make sure he doesn't go to final tribal and jewel tries to step up loses his balance under losing her balance sundra is in the water ozzy wins the final immunity you have immunity this time, it guarantees you a spot at the final tribal council. Ozzy wins immunity number five, and Yule is at a crossroads. He doesn't want to vote out Becky since they have been aligned since the very beginning, but Sundra has done nothing to be voted out either. Ozzy says, let's just split the vote and let them decide who goes and who stays on a tiebreaker. Fair enough. But Yule does talk to Becky and says, hey, you've been really loyal and you're a good friend. You can have my super idol if you want it to guarantee yourself a final three spot and I'll risk it just assuming that nobody's gonna think I gave you the idol. Despite his noble intentions though, Becky refuses. She wants to earn her way to the end. So at Tribal Council, the vote is tied two to two and an epic fire making showdown between Sundra and Becky takes place. Begin. Who will get the first flame? All right, stop right where you're at. We're gonna go to matches. <laughs> Becky having trouble lighting her match. Both fires out. After 38 days out here, you should both know how to make fire. I'm out. And Sundra is out of matches. That's gonna do it. Sandra, the tribe has spoken. That was embarrassing. Not for Yule, of course, it was great for him, but for Becky and Sundra. What's funny is back in the pre-merge when I2 won immunity off of Cowboy Making Fire, what you may not have noticed is that Becky and Sundra were helping him. Anyways, it's now day 39 and a feast arrives, but Becky is nowhere to be seen, which Ozzy says is symbolic since the game is kind of a two horse race on who will win it all. But Yule has a different sentiment. He's glad that Becky made it to the end. The fact that I was able to start this whole adventure with Becky on day one, the fact that I'm able to finish it with her, you know, it's gotta be a dream, right? Finding a really good friend is worth more than a million dollars. I mean, friendships like the one that I have with Becky, I think are that rare. I tried to play the game with as much integrity as I could. I know that I failed in a lot of respects, but you know, hopefully people won't hold it against me that I beat them. Welcome to your final tribal council. It is time, final tribal council. Jeff welcomes them all and right away before this gets started, I need to point out something crucial that the show did this season that is a massive unfair detriment to Yule and Ozzy. Rebecca is on the jury and she never spent one day with either of them. So her opinion is based solely on what she has heard from other people and what she has seen in tribal council, AKA all secondhand. Yule's opening speech is a solid one that credits his massive influence on the course of the season and how it was no coincidence that after every swap and mutiny, his tribes still dominated. He says he tried to play this game as honest as possible and he stayed loyal to those who stayed loyal to him. When I came here, I wanted to play a certain way. I didn't want to just play an individual game where I just got myself to the final. I honestly feel that I've probably done more than anyone else to really affect and influence the overall course of this game. I was able to bring everyone in my tribe and everyone in my alliance to the final four and ultimately to the final three. I won't lie about the fact that I've had to manipulate and deceive people, but I stayed loyal to the people who are loyal to me. So I would love to get your vote tonight and uh, I feel like I've earned my way here. I have played every facet of the game and in a way that you know, I'm proud of. 
Nate is the first juror, and while he doesn't ask Yule a question, he does say that Yule was the godfather who played a smart game. And Jenny is the second juror, and she asks Yule what was the most important aspect of his game. He gives a good answer, but this is impossible to rate as smart or dumb since we never see her ask Ozzy a question. And guess what? She goes on to vote for Ozzy, but she never spent a day on a tribe with him. So. I really don't know what Yule did wrong or what Ozzy did right. At least nothing is told to us during the edited television show. Parvati is the third juror and she basically says Becky sucks and Ozzy and Yule are awesome. It's a bit funny, but not helpful. Rebecca is the fourth juror and she says since she never met anyone who is currently sitting in the final three, she says, Yule, I noticed that you were flawless strategically and Ozzy, you were flawless athletically. So she asked to learn something about who they are. One of the main reasons I wanted to even be on Survivor was the fact that minorities were underrepresented on media. Like when I grew up, I didn't see any people look like me on TV. And whenever you see a lot of minorities on TV, it's just kind of caricatures. I wanted America to see Asian American men as they truly are. And if I do win this game, you know, I, I'd want to be a very visible spokesperson for talking about how we can move forward and try to get more minorities represented on TV. Okay. Thank you. Adam is the fifth juror, and he basically says, All three of you are boring and he asks for Ozzy to dunk on Yule and Becky and that's basically it from him. So we move on to Candace who is the sixth juror and she says Yule I have a yes or no question for you. I want to be very clear if you say anything other than yes or no got it I will not vote for you. My impression is that you have been shamelessly working this jury. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Well shamelessly is uh, kind of no. <laughs> No, I answered, I answered yes or no. I answered yes or no. I'm gonna have to think about that one. I want to point out that while Yule is mostly being logical throughout this and using a little emotion, Ozzy is leaning way harder into the emotional aspect as that is who he is and he's basically kind of the opposite of Yule in many regards. This is a brain versus heart situation. Who will win the jury over? What does the jury value more between the two of those things? Brad is the seventh juror and he asks Ozzy to tell him something that he has overcome in his life and... The relationship that I have with my father. For whatever reason, the man just can't be around and doesn't want to take responsibility. So I'm the one who's had to always make the effort to try and get to know him and to try and know my family in Mexico. And I love my family more than anything, but my father just has never been there for me. And to not have that as a kid, it's just a different thing to know that the person that created you doesn't want you around or whatever. Anyway, it's the hardest experience. Wow, thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. That's what I mean. Yule never shows that much depth of emotion, which is why these two people are so different. But in their own unique way. Sandra is the eighth juror and she asks each of them what they discovered about life from this game and Yule says he ultimately overcame his fears and found a new sense of confidence. Penner is the final juror and he kind of just rips Ozzy a new one. On occasion I have found you arrogant, I have found you with an attitude of entitlement. You act as if you are a prince to me. No, I mean that honestly. I'm a little uncomfortable giving million dollars to a 25 year old kid that I perceive as having some issues of entitlement. On the flip side, when Penner talks to Yule, he kind of rips into him too, but basically says Yule's a politician and Penner questions his integrity. I think what you said is absolutely true. I've done a lot of deceiving in this game, a lot of manipulation, but Survivor is a game, obviously. Everyone here came into the game knowing what the game was about. If I was outside this game, I would never do this to unsuspecting people. Look, I have the ability and I have the technique to manipulate people. But if you look at the overall game, you know, I've stayed true to the original people that I made alliances with. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. It did very well, thank you. That is all nine jurors, and uh, Becky is a non-factor as no one values the game she played, so that is why I haven't really mentioned her at all during this final tribal council. This is for all intents and purposes, Yule versus Ozzy. So the vote is revealed for the winner, and... Ozzy. Yule. 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 Oh my God. Yule. The winner of Survivor Cook Islands.
Yule may have only beat Ozzy by one vote, but it is clear he played the far superior Survivor game. Even without his super idol that he found in episode 2, he didn't seem to be in any position that would have gotten him voted off until it was way too late in the game. However, he needed the I-24, as it was by no means a solo effort. An impressive victory if I do say so myself. So get this. Yule doesn't play again on any returning season. Not Heroes vs. Villains, not Blood vs. Water, and not even Game Changers. No, he doesn't come back to play again until Season 40, Winners at War. By the way, if you want to pick what videos I make, like this one, then consider supporting the channel on Patreon. It is an optional way to support us as we make this content and it grants you access to see everything up to six months early. Link is in the description. Thank you for your support. 39 days, 20 people, one survivor. This is it, winners at war. 20 past winners all competing for a $2 million prize, the most in the show's history. A couple of twists are thrown in this season with the return of the Edge of Extinction, a place players live at after being voted out, where they are given two chances to get back in the game. And the new twists this season are the fire tokens. Every player starts with one, and it is unknown what effect they will have in this season. Yule doesn't know anyone on this cast, except Parvati, of course, and believe it or not, after Cook Islands, Parvati was asked to play two more times and she evolved into a strategic powerhouse. A lot has changed since her first season with Yule. All 20 winners then arrive in Fiji to an overly giddy Jeff when he asks Yule how much has changed since the last time you played. So do you see this game today through a different prism as a more mature human? Yeah, I feel like a dinosaur that's been time bombed into the future. The world has changed, the people have changed, Survivor has changed, and I think I'm gonna have to change. I'm thinking, I can't believe this is happening. I was just super happy to be on Survivor again, and especially kind of a all winners edition. But seeing all these people and realizing how long ago I played, <laughs> it's kind of overwhelming. A drink before war is always a good idea. <laughs> Everyone then draws their buffs and Yule's on the red to call tribe. Parvati is on the blue Sele tribe, and Jeff says, we're not wasting any time. Let's do it. We're gonna do our first challenge for Flint and immunity. The first tribe to score three points wins. Yule is a part of the first team to try to score the first point with Tyson when... Go! Decal dominates so they are safe from tribal. Upon arriving at their camp, they get a fire made right away and Yule says, I'm a free agent who doesn't know anyone here so I'm happy to work with whoever wants to work with me. I have no biases. Despite them not needing to go to tribal, talks are already abound about who to vote off first and it seems clear that no one wants a repeat of season 8 all-stars as people say we're getting rid of Amber so she can't reconnect with Boston Rob. But then Yule talks to Sophie and... I would love to work with you. Really? Yeah. Um, you have to like punctuate that with more. <laughs> what? I don't know. I think just like I've been asked out on a date. <laughs> <laughs> when I played Cook Islands, I tried to play a very rational, strategic game. I used a lot of game theory, I used a lot of math. But this season, I think my biggest challenge will be coming in disconnected. I haven't been part of the Survivor community. A lot of these people have played with each other. They know each other. So Kim played poker with Robin Tyson. So, she so there's that connection. I remember watching one video where Tyson actually said something to the effect of, hey, if we're ever on an island, this is going to be the power alliance. It's almost like me, Nick, and Wendell are more of like the free agents. People talk about like having meat shields around. I feel like I have my own nerd shield in Yule. Wendell, so are you totally on, on the four of us? Hundred percent. Okay. I believe that Amber and Rob should definitely get to the edge of extinction as soon as possible. Yeah. How would Yule know about the Poker Alliance? The show makes us want to believe he was doing some deep cut research before coming on the season, and it wasn't just some over-enthusiastic fan helping him out before the season began filming. We then move forward to the next immunity challenge where they lose. Fun! Back at camp, Yule says, uh, what do we do now? Can we all talk to each other in a civilized manner? Tony jokes that that would be a first for them. We then see a flurry of names being thrown around except for Yule's. No one is mentioning him, which is which is great. Yule says, I feel like we need to eliminate members of this poker alliance, especially Rob and Amber. However, others are saying we need to knock out Kim Spradlin since she is often considered one of the most dominant winners of all time and they don't want her repeating that. So at Tribal Council, they all go to vote and... 
Kim. Amber. Kim. Amber. Two votes, Amber. Kim. Three votes, Kim. We're tied. That's three votes, Amber. Three votes, Kim. Amber. Second person voted out of Survivor. Winners at war. Amber. Amber, the tribe has spoken. With that, we reach the end of the premiere episode, and so far, Yule has been a central figure on the Dakal tribe in many of the scenes. And heck, I think he seems to be in a good position strategically as well. At the moment, there's no reason to be worried about him going anytime soon as long as he can keep his threat level under wraps. Episode 2 sees a juxtaposition between Yule and Tony. You see, their island has breadfruit on it, and Yule decides the sensible way to approach this is to get a stick with a hook on it and just knock down the breadfruit. However, Tony builds this massive ladder that looks way unsafe because he doesn't really do a good job building it, but he climbs it and somehow it holds together despite everyone being shocked and he gets multiple breadfruit, getting a bigger reward for his bigger risk. Hmm. Interesting. Their tribe wins immunity in a blowout. So we cut to episode three where Tyson tries to tell everyone that Sandra is the biggest threat here as the only two time winner. And Yule says, hmm, Sandra is predictable and Tyson is not. And I want to get rid of the unpredictable players. We then see Tony catch a shark and Yule says this. We want to keep the momentum going. And I think one of the components of keeping that momentum going is keeping morale high and being well fed. <clears throat> Tyson saying, hey, we should vote out Sandra. I think she'd run in the show. I think that, I think this will be something that everyone can get behind. There is no way that Tyson's going to come after me and that he's not going to pay the price for it. Don't come after me. If you come after me, I better not find out about it. They win immunity yet again, and in episode four, Yule says with all this time not voting each other out, they are truly bonding, which can only be beneficial in the long run. We then see Tyson talk to Tony and Sandra about eliminating players without connections like Sophie and Yule, but Sandra and Tony don't care about that at all. They want Tyson gone. We then see DeCall blow a massive lead and lose immunity. So back at camp, Tyson talks to Yule about voting off Nick. I mean, at this point, who hasn't Tyson suggested to be voted out of this game? And Yule says, sure, we can do Nick whatever though yule is obviously lying at tribal council jeff says yule how simple is tonight's vote at any moment in time there'll be various groups of people who feel closer to other than other groups of people that's absolutely true and the problem is if you expose them in a hard vote they cement those lines and they limit your options because we haven't had to like take that instamatic photo that shows what the lines are at that point in time because those lines can change and we want them to be able to change Yule's brain is far too big for this game. Jeff then asks, who is different to Yule in real life versus how he saw them on TV? And Yule says, you know, on TV, Tony seemed like a real jerk, but in real life, he's actually kind of awesome. And I gotta say, from a storytelling standpoint, this moment feels like it's there just to blow smoke up Tony's butt, just to make him seem like, oh, isn't Tony amazing? It's almost like propaganda. Anyways, Tyson is voted off seven to one to one. Tyson, the tribe has spoken. Episode 5 sees a huge unexpected moment from Yule when he is asked about Jonathan Penner and his wife Stacy from Cook Islands. I see that the only person I kept close with is Jonathan Penner. Gary and I are very close friends. Wait, what's the deal with his wife? She's like battling ALS. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so hard. She can't breathe on her own, so she's on oh, really? assisted breathing. And she can't swallow, so she needs 24-hour care. Jonathan's with her all the time. They always have some nurse or someone who's helping because she can't she literally can't do anything by herself they're basically just hoping that in the next couple of decades they'll find a cure they're under a tremendous amount of strain emotionally financially and it just broke my heart this season of survivor i feel like i'm not just playing for myself or my own family but i'm playing for something bigger than myself i would just love to use this opportunity to try to raise awareness of anyone who's suffering from als and their families who really are in need you know much more than any of us are i'm glad the show let you talk about that especially since he says no matter what his winnings this season are going towards als research i do have a video just like this one all about penner's three times playing on survivor so if you're all of a sudden feeling like you want to see something about jonathan penner I suggest watching that after this video. Also, I have a link in the description if you would like to donate to ALS Research. Anyways, Survivor does that dumb twist where we go from two tribes to three, and Yule is now in the new Sele tribe with Wendell, Nick, Michelle, and Parvati. 
Well, well, well. At the new camp, we see Yule and Parvati talk for the first time in forever. What is your wife's name? Sophie. It was funny. Um, yeah, she's actually a big fan of yours. Really? Yeah. Well, I like her already. Yeah, no, <laughs> so I played with Yule before in Cook Islands, and Yule and I were never on the same side. But he told me that his wife loves me and that I'm her favorite player. So I think that's like a little bit of an in with Yule. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be working together, especially since with Wendell and Nick, Yule already has the numbers here. They then win immunity. So we move on to episode six where Jeff says, surprise, two tribes are going to tribal tonight and only one of the three of you can win. They end up losing. So back at camp, Wendell says, yeah, Parvati's going tonight. We then see her say she's been trying to talk to Yule, but every time she talks to him, he has like his arms crossed and his body language says he's not really gonna work with Parvati. I will say Yule is not a great liar, but then at tribal council, shocker to Yule, we find out Michelle and Wendell used to date and there are some real feelings there left over from whenever that happened, though it seems kind of fresh. Yule says this fight between them is like watching two parents go at it at the dinner table. It's a bit awkward. But then out of nowhere, Wendell says, Parvati, for two fire tokens, I will vote for whoever you want. Uh, what? She doesn't take him up on the offer though, but they all go to vote and... Parvati. Parvati. Wendell. Wendell. Two votes, Wendell. We're tied. Seventh person voted out a survivor. Winners at war. Parvati. Parvati, the tribe has spoken. The next episode has Yule saying, wow, what the heck? Tribal sucked. Why did Wendell even offer to flip in front of everybody? He then talks to Wendell about this and Wendell says, yeah, you're right. I shouldn't have done that. My bad. However, when Wendell talks to Michelle about their fight, he gets mad and defensive and Yule recognizes this. The feelings there are real. They then lose immunity by literal seconds. I mean, look at how close this is. Just insane. Back at camp, Nick says, Wendell has peeved me off. Let's vote him out. But then Wendell says he wants Yule out. What the heck? I feel like crucial information is being left out of the show. Michelle then tells Yule she wants Wendell's fire tokens. And mind you, Michelle already has three, so the greed is real. Yule still only has one. He then says, let me tell you my plans to get those fire tokens. Yeah, I have an idea for how we might be able to get Wendell's fire tokens. We would tell Wendell she'd be voting for me and Michelle would be voting for me. But the reality though is that and Michelle would put up. And that way, at least there's some chance Michelle might get one of those fire tokens. In which case, I would have some risk because my name gets written down. I would like some compensation. I'd like to get a fire token. I'm slowly realizing that siding with Yule is super dangerous in, in this game. Is there any part of you that wants to keep Wendell over Yule? Yeah, I'm open. I think going forward with Yule, we're gonna be like locked in these set plans where he's running everything. We're going to have less flexibility. I agree. If you feel strongly about one way or the other, I will follow you. Okay. I am so confused. This seems like it's going to be Yule's vote off episode, but it can't be, right? At Tribal Council, Jeff points out that Yule is the last remaining old school player not on the edge of extinction. Oh interesting i see the trend here now old school by the way means someone who came from the first 19 seasons i think the writing is on the wall here so they all go to vote and first vote yule wendell yule ninth person voted out yule wow yule the tribe has spoken Thanks to the Edge of Extinction, Yule's story is not quite over yet, as the very next day, everyone gets their first shot to get back in the game. As it turns out, the Edge players had all this time on the island where they got chances to get fire tokens, and Yule, of course, had no time to get any. Fun. This is really unfair to Yule. So everyone who has tokens got to buy an advantage in the challenge. Of course, Yule doesn't get an advantage. So they all compete to get back in the game, and... Go! First stage, you've got to untie three bags of sticks, living on extinction for this moment right here. Tyson uses his advantage, does not have to dig, and Yule is going to have to dig. What is this thing? It's deep. That's brutal, man. Rob has his ball. All he has to do is drop that little white ball at the top of this track. Yule is in there now. Yule had no advantage, but he is in with everybody else. Yule, slow and steady, cannot get too aggressive or you risk losing everything. Right now, it is Tyson in the lead, then Yule and Rob at the same spot, 
trying to catch up. No, no, no. Yule thinks he's no. in trouble. Can he save no. it? Oh, no, Yule geez. loses everything. Oh, Has oh. to start again. And he's yeah. got it! Yeah. Tyson is back in! Yeah. Wow, imagine if Yule actually had an advantage, because he caught up, he was right there, he just needed another shot to get up that stupid snake. He was so close, but he will get another shot to return in the finale. Episode 9 sees Wendell join him on the edge. Good, that's what you get. But unfortunately nothing else happens for Yule until episode 10, when a boat shows up, and... Oh my god, it's our family! <laughs> I, I can't describe how much sheer joy and happiness I felt in that moment. Bye bye daddy. This is the one time on Survivor when you are yourself with your family and you can see people just be themselves with the people that they love the most. I'm surprised they didn't just put that in the secret scenes because we spent a good 15 minutes with the actual players in the game and their families. So to see this with the players on the edge, it tells me that one of the players here will have a big impact at the end of the game. Could it be Yule? We'll see. Episode 12 sees everyone getting a new challenge. There are 11 players there, but the first six to race around the island and retrieve 20 coconuts, one at a time, wins two fire tokens, which will be enough to buy an advantage at the final challenge. These are some big stakes, so how does Yule do? Yeah, Yule! Good work. To my big surprise, I ended up in third place. Great, now Yule won't be completely screwed like he was last time. Aside from seeing Yule meditate with Ethan, there isn't much else we get from him until everyone's final day on the edge where he says these fire tokens have really changed how they play Survivor, and with his two, he's going to buy one advantage. That sounds great until you realize others have enough tokens to buy two or even three advantages. What the heck? So we go to the finale and Yule's final shot to get back in the game. Go! It is on, this is it, your return challenge. Yule is through quickly, he's out first. Natalie, who has all three advantages, is stuck in the first section she has to run. Three advantages and she can't get out of the first section. Natalie's good, you skip the dig. Natalie goes right to the rope bridge. Yule has his rope rung, he's good. It is Natalie, Carmody, Yule and Wendell, all four had advantages in this challenge, and right now they are paying off. Austin Robb is through. Yule is through. Natalie very close at a tough corner. She's got it! Oh my God. Natalie has earned her way back into this game. Once again, he was so close. Imagine if he had all three advantages like Natalie. But do you feel like this is a sour way to end Yule's story? Because I think so. Well then, we're both in luck as Yule does come back to play another game two years later called Snake in the Grass. This show features him, Earl from season 14 of Survivor, Malcolm from seasons 25, 26, and 34 of Survivor, and Jeff from Naked and Afraid. One of them is the saboteur, aka the snake, and over the course of two days, they're going to be trying to figure out which one of them is that snake. Now I'm gonna keep this a secret from you, but I want you to take your guess if you don't already know, and let's continue. If everyone votes for the snake at the end, they split the $100,000. But if they don't correctly vote for the snake, then the snake wins all that money. We then catch up with Yule, who says, I've been on Survivor twice. First time I won really gave me that boost of confidence that I think I was missing for much of my life. I'm a naturally a very introverted and shy person. Because of that, I've learned to try to confront my fears and my anxieties. When you get to go off and do something crazy like this, you take it. I am so glad he was asked to play on the show, though I am thinking he is acting a bit strange when he says, these are the people he would want to be with during a zombie apocalypse. Yeah, forget your wife and kids. I want to be with Jeff from Naked and Afraid. Oh yeah. But then the host gives everyone their first clue as to who the snake could be. Life growing up was rather tough. You might say it was even rough. The snake played sports and gave it their all. They really liked ones with a ball. Hmm, interesting. Earl says he trusts Yule and wants to work with them, but then we get our first challenge. They have 30 minutes to find five snake puzzle pieces underwater with these metal detectors. If they can find them and put together the snake, they get the second snake clue. We see Malcolm find the first piece and he hands it off to Earl, who throws it and loses it in the ocean. Great. Yule says he expects a lot more of Earl. Jeff then finds the second and third piece, but they run out of time they fail. They are then told to hike through their camp where they get to sleep for the night and a third snake clue is hidden somewhere around there. Yule and Malcolm talk and they both kind of suspect Earl at the moment, but then Yule is the one who finds the third clue at their camp. Hey, hey, 
on something, guys. You found the clue? Yeah. The snake went to college, which is real keen. Their college walls were leafy, were leafy green. green. From the time, time they had to crown. And he even passed that. a bar exam. Who's <clears throat> a lawyer? I'm a lawyer. So we learn that Yule is a lawyer and he went to Stanford, but Malcolm went to Dartmouth and was a bartender. Jeff says the way that Yule talks doesn't seem authentic to him and it makes him very suspicious. In fact, Yule to him talks like he's reading off a mental teleprompter. And while it's harsh, it's kind of true. I get what Jeff's saying. Yule, he's trying very, very hard to convince me that Earl is the snake. I have to go with my gut right now. What is going on here? At every turn. Yule is avoiding me and not talking to me. That's very suspicious. Is he the snake? If he's a snake, he might not feel comfortable coming to somebody he knows that I might see through it. We then see their second and final challenge where they must assemble a raft, reach the buoy in the ocean and get the key off the top of it and from underneath. If they can get them both and reach the host in 25 minutes, they get the final snake clue. Yule notices Earl isn't really trying that hard and when they reach the buoy, Yule gets the key on top but dives down six times and can't find it underneath. Or is Yule purposely not getting that key? Well, they flip the buoy upside down and retrieve it, and Yule then races to the shore with only minutes to go, and... People think I'm the snake, that if I don't perform well on the challenge, it's just going to validate and confirm their suspicions. Got it! Nailed it! Got him both! Right here! I'm looking at him and he finally makes I'm like, good job! Doesn't mean you're not the snake. While being a friend is indeed a fact, in order to survive, they had to stab a back. When you put it together, there's an indicator. The snake once tangled with an alligator. Oh, that's bullshit! Who has been talking about alligators this morning? Jeff. Well, that's interesting. Jeff has been the lowest on everyone's radar this whole time, but this final snake clue could be the biggest one. After all, he's been the only one talking about wrestling alligators this entire time. They all then go to the snake pit, AKA tribal council, where they vote for who they think the snake is. And before I reveal who it is, I want you to take your final guess. Who is the snake? Do you got it? Okay. Well, first vote. Yo, yo. Jeff, yo, will the real snake stand up? Sorry, boys. No! I just want to say, kudos, man. You played an excellent game. I'm sorry, bro. Oh, uh, don't no, no, I'm sorry, so guys. No, no, look. I got bit hard. My target was on Yule from early on in the game. Like it didn't sound believable. It sounded like he was just going through the steps. And God, I'm sorry, Yule. Yo, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. It was Malcolm in the middle the whole time. He reveals that during the first challenge, he stomped on the sand to hide the snake piece that Earl threw. During the second challenge, he actively paddled away from the buoy to purposely slow them down. And as it turns out, he has wrestled alligators in the past. I really like this one episode spinoff with Yule, Malcolm, and Earl, despite Yule losing. And it feels like a much better way to end the video rather than winners at war. So what do you think about Yule Kwan? Do you want to see him play again? Comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.